Hello, welcome back. We're gonna do another tutorial. This one, the goal is just overall rendering and what you need to do in Rhino and Photoshop to get sort of a base render that you can then take into Lightroom or do more Photoshopping to sort of refine it stylistically um, and make it your own image. So um, for this one, I have included sort of like a sample file I made um, so you can sort of follow along um, on your own. So when you open up the file, you'll see it's already in this view, or at least you should. Um, and this is sort of like a bird's eye view of a building that's just sort of floating in space. And so the, so the three-ish main problems with this uh, view are the composition, the lack of context, and the lack of materials. So in terms of the composition, we'll start there. You want to have your renderings be from a point of view that they'll actually be experienced and no one's really going to see your building this way. So first thing we want to do is we're going to come down to more of a uh, person perspective, like a human's point of view, which is sort of between this first floor. Um, so you can see the first floor. And then as you can see, one problem with this is our vertical lines aren't vertical. All of our columns sort of kink in, uh, which they wouldn't in real life. And so to avoid this, we're going to switch to a two-point perspective and sort of pan back down so we're roughly at eye level and our verticals are vertical. I have a view made already. And so the next problem with this is there's no context. Um, according to this, our building is floating in space, uh, which obviously isn't how most buildings work. So uh, we want to go ahead and add some context, and I've already got those modeled, I've just turned those layers off. So we want to add, um, just turn this layer on. And so we get some buildings around it, and um, sort of a park kind of thing next to it. Just to divide, define the overall space, uh, we've got a curb and a sidewalk with a street. And yeah, so if we were to go ahead and hit render on this right now, it would look like this. So you can see it's way overexposed, the sun is way too bright, there's no materials on anything except the trees because those are imported from somewhere else, um, and it just isn't good. So obviously we're going to try and change that. And so the first couple of things we want to address are the lack of materials, and let's go ahead and switch back to perspective because it's sort of easier for navigating. Um, what we want to do for materials is we want to assign these by layer ideally. So for example, these wood slats, these are all on a uh, slats uh, layer. So then we can just come into this, uh, to the layer panel, and then double click this far right button. And then you can see here, I've already got a material applied. Um, but if you want to do something else, we could come down over to this menu, import from material library, and then come here to wood, and you've got all kinds of wood. Um, like Yoroko, which is looking like that. Um, so, I, but I think we're gonna stick with the um, that our Japanese elm. I like the color of that. Um, and sort of the same thing for the rest of these. Like our grass is on its own layer. So we're gonna come here and you know have the grass be grass. And another thing you want to avoid when choosing materials is choosing materials that are purely white because as you saw in the image before, if we have everything be white, then it becomes overexposed if you have the sun just a little bit too bright. So we at least want things to be a light gray. And my personal choice for light gray things is this concrete light texture. So yeah, we're just going to go through and put materials on all of this, on this whole model, like the glass is a, um, it's a light blue glass. And yeah, so that's where the next step is to get everything in material and then start rendering. So if you come over to the rendering panel, I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. Um, so we've got a different way, a couple of different ways of specifying the view. Um, if you want to have it be your current viewport versus a specific viewport, such as top, front, view, or right, top, front, or right, for the specific views, if you have named views, that would be from this panel, any one of these named views, 
So we're gonna use this rendered view I've set up because it's, uh, it's, more, it's modified for the uh, aspect ratio we're gonna go into the composition. And so speaking of aspect ratio, that's what this is. So you've got all sorts of just generic uh, image dimensions. I like to go for something more vertical. So I've gone with this 1800 by 2600. And if you wanna see what that's gonna look like, we can come over to the view we're gonna render. And we can use view capture the file. And custom 1800 by, by 2600. So it's going to look about like that uh, for our render, which I think is good enough for rendering and then photoshopping later. So coming back to the render panel, um, we've got our viewport set. DPI is kind of like resolution, like how many dots per inch. The bigger the number, the higher the resolution, the longer it takes to render. And so that's sort of a similar concept with quality. It's just really about how well um, the render engine is going to render the light um, in terms of reflections and shadows. Um, generally, I think good is good enough. And for the background, we're just going to keep that a white and make sure it's at a transparent background um, so we can Photoshop in the sky behind it. And then everything here will leave as is. For the sun and skylight, we want to make sure those are on. Um, Let's look at the sun for a bit. So one way to do this, if you have a very specific site, is to make sure manual control is off. And then you can set the location and time as you need it. Um, so let's say we're in Seattle. And it is this time of day. If we just pop this into rendered mode, you can start to get a sense for what the shadows will look like. You can see here we've got some shadows with the trees but I think the best way to study the shadows is to put it in the top view so you can see that the sun is very much coming from right behind the camera which I usually prefer to avoid I like to have the sun either coming from the side of the model or from behind it I think that creates more dynamic um, lighting so we don't really have a site so we're just gonna put it in manual control um, let's see, let's put this a little bit higher and you want it coming more from the right just a little bit, about like there. So we can see it's coming from the right and in this diagram you can see that it's, we're going to get these fairly long shadows with it. And one thing we also want to make sure is that our intensity isn't at 1 because we saw earlier when the intensity is at 1 it's too high. So we're going to drop it to about 0.65. And then back to the rendering, we want to have the skylight on. That just provides more ambient light. If we turn off the skylight, the shadows from the sun get much harsher. And we don't really want that. And then everything else we can pretty much leave as is. So we'll come back to the rendered view. Um, put this back to the original view just by double clicking. And we'll turn off rendered mode for now. And then, yeah, once you've got these settings as you like them, you can just go ahead and hit render, and eventually then we'll start. So this is the, the render panel that pops up, and it's gonna think about it for a little bit, and then we'll start rendering. So you can see here, we've got these path tracing samples, one out of 500. And so basically what it's doing is sort of taking your model materials and your light, and what it knows about how light works and it's just like doing these passes over and over eventually coming to a final more refined image and so as you can see our first image is very grainy and rough so yeah that's sort of what this is going to look like but i've already gone ahead and rendered this earlier usually i like to just finish my modeling at night and then let it render while i sleep and here you can see we have our finished render um, and we've got materials, shadows, it's a decent start to a render. Um, so the next step obviously would be to add a sky because we don't have one. 
And one resource that I like to use is this website on Splash. They've got a lot of high quality photos, so we're going to go ahead and search for Blue Sky. And as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of options. Um, and I think we'll go with this one. So we're going to go ahead and pull this into Photoshop. And we want this to be the background, obviously, so we're going to pull this behind our current background. And I don't think we really want these hills in the picture, so we're going to zoom out. Oops. We're going to zoom out. Command T to transform. And all right, there we go. Now it's just sky. Um, and I think this sky is a little bit too blue, so we're going to tone it down, maybe to about 30% opacity. But since it's a transparent background, we can't see anything. So we're going to go ahead and drop um, this white background behind it. Alrighty. And so now we can start to see how the sky is going to start to look. Maybe we'll bump this up to 40 or 50. So yeah, we've got our image and our sky. Um, one thing I think we're missing a little bit is something in the foreground. So if you remember back to the depth of field tutorial, we're going to go ahead and throw in some trees to frame it just a little bit. Um, again, we've got our Acer Maximus Gianum, our good old pal. So we're going to throw this guy in, and then we're going to render, or we're going to blur it just a smidge like that. And then we can use these to frame our foreground just a little bit. Let's see, filter, render, tree. Alrighty. And then we want this to have some asymmetry. So I think we might try and get this to be a little more organic in terms of how they're laid out. And we might drop the opacity by not that much, but it's a smidge. Um, and another thing that I would like to do is have the color of these match the color of the tree just a little bit more. So we're going to convert these to smart objects. Convert to smart object. Um, so now that puts them on one layer. And what we can do now is we can edit these, edit this layer. Um, without it being permanent. So if we go ahead and do hue and saturation, um, this is okay. You can see it becomes something we can turn on and off and sort of undo. Um, so I think what we should do is we should desaturate these a little bit, make them a bit more yellow. Let's see. Yeah, maybe darken them a smidge. Yeah. I think that looks good. So now these mats just a little bit better in terms of color. And then another thing that I'm not loving is how harsh this horizon is with the background, with the sky. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this brush and we're gonna soften it just a bit. We're gonna make this new layer, put it over the sky and we're gonna dabble in some white gradient just like that and then we're going to drop the opacity like so just to give the horizon some glow and make that transition smoother so i think this is good to go um, the next steps that i would do from here i would take this into lightroom or continue using photoshop whichever you prefer um, to do it to do some color changes and add some contrast and some style of your own to it and so, for example, you can see here um, what this might look like with some more um, time put into post-processing edits from Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, but the goal was to get you to this point, which is a sort of a good starting point for making a render that's your own and is specific to you and that you're happy with. That's all I've got for today. Thank you. Hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, let me know or suggestions. Feel free to drop them in the comments.
enjoy, have fun. Bye.